Photoshop 2023 has just come out. As usual, it's got tons of great features. It's got various selection features and loads of other things that you may or may not want. However, it's also got materials. And for me, I think it's a great feature, materials. It's been part of Illustrator for a while, and now it's in Photoshop. Go to Window and Materials. So you can see it there, and here's the panel. It's got two tabs, it's got materials and lighting. Now the lighting is not great, it's fine. It'd be nice if it was sort of more interactive. There's no great features. It's not really 3D, particularly in brilliant ways. Still, it's useful to have. You've also got here materials, and you can see all the materials you've got now. You've got steel, you've got copper. These are all ones that come with Photoshop by default. So you've got gold. You can delete them as well. I'm certain I haven't deleted I don't want to delete them. But you can, obviously, you've got to delete there. You've got cardboard, watercolour, watercolour, and loads more. Egg crates, some really weird ones. And you can search for them. So you might think, oh, gold. You've got four different types of gold you can search for. You also notice at the side, weirdly, it doesn't make much of a song dance. It doesn't even, does it come up with anything? It doesn't even come up with anything, particularly indicating what these actually do. Well, what they do is you click them, and weirdly, you go to a browser, even though it's not particularly obvious that that's what it's going to do. The first one goes to this one, Substance 3D Assets. And you've got here all assets. You've got loads of assets. Surfaces, atlases, <laughs> decals, loads of them. You've also got free assets. So if you don't want to pay for anything, here's a selection of free ones. You've got various weaves. You've got some very unusual ones. Cliff, cliff with sand, and so on. And also you've got some 3D models. Not certain if you can use those in Photoshop or not, since the 3D features seem to be being removed. But you've got a lot more here, 3D community assets. And these ones, I don't know about the licensing. So please check that out in the various forums. But here, you've got a whole range of different options here. Banana skin, cave wall. I mean, that looks brilliant. And all you need to do is click, just download it. Now, it's not automatic. It doesn't sort of put it into your panel for you. It's a pity it doesn't do it, but it doesn't for some weird reason. What it does, it saves it to your download, so you can click here, and you can see it's an SBSA file. File, And then once you've done that, you can go back to Photoshop. Let's just go back to Photoshop. Let's move that out of the way. And you can see a little plus here. Just click that, click there, and it will come up, and there's the file. And you can select it, and then just open it, and it will add it to this section, your materials. These ones are all part of Photoshop that come with Photoshop 2023. You can delete them if you wish, wish as well. Now, how to use them? Well, what you can do, simply click. Just go here, and you notice a panel here. You think, wow, what's that panel? Doesn't There's nothing on it. It would be nice if it indicated that, that this is where all the various properties are. Obviously, at this point, there's no properties, but it would be nice because it just looks like a blank bit of the panel. Very odd. Let's select this one, sand. As soon as you click, you'll see now what you get. Material properties, and they've all got their own options. So if you click any of the others, soft, steel, obviously they will be different. Obviously steel isn't really particularly like sand. Well, it is in some ways, of course. But you've got resolution. You can set it to high. To be honest, hardly looks that different. A little bit better, maybe, but still, if you're going for obviously a very large document, probably going to be useful. You've also got here, now I'm going to go with medium. I don't want it obviously to slow things down when I'm showing. So random seed, you can just change that. And you can see when you do that, it gives a slightly different sound. And they've all got, well, they should all have a sort of random feature. Maybe some haven't. Some will have certain features. Some don't. You've also got this repeat feature, which is really nice. So you can set it to say, let's push it up and you can see what happens. That's in repeat X. So if I push it up even more, you can see even more the effect and you get this lovely thin line effect there, which is really nice because you could put it that way or you go for repeat Y and you can see the up vertically this time. You can also repeat uniform. So you can click there and then you get the option here for repeat. I'm not certain why they just didn't do a link in between the two. 
that seems more conventional Photoshop approach, but still they've got this other field here. Then you go down here and you've got default various properties. Now, unfortunately you cannot save a preset. You just get three presets or actually four presets. You've got rippled, dark, and so on. You run through them. You can see you've got those, but there's no add feature. That would be a nice addition for maybe 2024. Who knows? But it would be a great one to add if it's possible. But you've got pink sand there. And you've got sand colour. And you can change that. So if you decide, oh, gone for pink sand. Now, of course, what I can do, I can click here and I can just go and make it maybe slightly more orange sand. Doesn't look very natural as sand, but still. You've also got sand roughness. So you can change that. Now, sometimes, to be honest, hardly makes any difference at all. I've looked at some of them, I think, you know what, has that changed? You can really look at it for quite a while thinking, hmm, nothing. You can also modify the pe pebble density. Again, very subtle, but a few pebbles are added. <laughs> very strange. You've also got pebble color. So click there, maybe go for green. And, oh, you can see a few pebbles there. Since the density is very low, let's push the density up. Yes, you can see a few more pebbles popping. They don't really look like pebbles. I mean, you'd have to really struggle to say they're pebbles, but I guess that's what they think they are. You've also got the roughness of the pebbles. You've also got wave amount. Let's just change the wave amount. And you can see very much like the previous X and wave amount Y. And also wave roundness. You can, you can see straight away, you can create a variety of different designs. What would be brilliant? Another feature would be a randomizer feature. Something that Photoshop doesn't really particularly go for, though it does have it in the filters and wave. That would be nice. So you could just click and randomize any of these options. And you could then explore millions of different designs. Sometimes using sliders, it's a bit slow to go through them all. And that's why more presets would be nice. Maybe a visual preset as well. Offset, so you can move it, shift it. Offset Y, offset up, up and down. You can also go for rotation. Now, weirdly, some of them end up getting cut off in a weird way. So the offset and the X rotation seems to cut it off for a bit, but you can manipulate the offset and eventually it seems to sort itself out. Don't ask me why it does that, but I've noticed a few sort of have problems. You've got here luminosity. Let's just push that up and you can see what happens. It just goes, wow, very bright. You can also go the other way, of course. Dark, make it a lot darker. It's obviously an evening scene. Maybe they could have added an evening and sunrise sort of options there. So you've got luminosity, you've got contrast. And some of these features, luminosity and contrast, are in all of them, or as many as I've found anyway. They might be some that don't have that, I don't know. But certainly they seem to be quite common. And you've also got hue shift, which is really good. Now, sometimes, of course, hue shift doesn't particularly do anything. In this case, it does, because you can see it was red. But if you've got a color that's very bright white or something, or black, it doesn't make any difference. But if you've got red, it turns it maybe to blue, or maybe to, well, red again. Oh, and green. And you've also got saturation, you've got normal intensity, and also you've got some other options here. You've got the format, you can go for OpenGL or DirectX. Mine seems to be set DirectX, perfectly reasonable. And you can change the height, height position as well. And that's for shadows, creates different sort of things there. You can see then got different positions. I push that down that way. You can't see any shadows at all. I assume that's what it is where you can see it more mottled. I suppose maybe that's what it's doing, it digs in. Seems sometimes to give more like shadow. So that's why I think of it as a shadow feature. And you've got this one as well. Didn't seem to do anything. No. <laughs> Might do something, but it doesn't seem to do anything. However, you can see what happens. What it does is generated this background copy. It's a layer, it's a standard layer, which you can remove. You can always turn around and say, you know what, I don't want it. Just del deselect it. It's also a smart filter. And you can see it, it's a plugin, basically. It's a plugin, a smart filter. That's what it's worked as. And even though you, if you go to filter, you wouldn't find it here, even though you've got 3D, these ones are, I don't know if they're still working. So you've got that. You can always go back at any time. And you can, of course, double click it. You've got options here. You've got blending modes. So you can actually run through and change that, darken. So you can see just by clicking here, you've got option to blend that substance 
in different ways. So you might turn around and say, oh, let's just go for divide to create a very weird combination with the original layer and this new layer. And you can see the effect then you've got opacity as well. So that's just via that. So you can just tweak it a bit to create even more. So literally you've got 150, 150 of these subs. You've got hundreds of settings or options possibly within them. Plus you've got all the blending modes. So literally millions and millions of designs can be created using this feature. And click OK. So you've got this design. Now once you've done, you can then of course just flatten it. You don't have to keep it like that. You can go to layer and you can say flatten image. Just go here, filters and blur, Gaussian blur or maybe stylized render. Go for stylized, I'm gonna go with oil paint and you can apply oil paint, click OK. Something like that. So again, even more combinations of effects and designs simply from one of these. And you can still go and click over here. So click again and it will create another one on top. Again, exactly the same as before. Go to this, you can change blending mode for this, the, blend, the actual layer. So you can go through the layer, run through, maybe go for linear light. You can see then you get some very odd combinations. Obviously not what well, you'd say steel, but you now got this blue steel effect. And you've still got these options. You can change a random seed. And you can see as you change it, now I'm gonna push it back to not linear light. Let's go for normal so you can see it. But you can see you've got exactly the same repeat, repeat Y, repeat uniform. You've got presets, rusty steel. Let's go for that one. Ah. Rough steel creates a nice angle. I mean, that looks great. Absolutely wonderful. Again, you can create this layer, create it two, three, four times. Use blending modes to blend between them. Maybe apply a gradient on top of this just to give some different color effects to that design. Maybe use with the layer menu and adjustments. Just go through these. Just a whole range of still color variant. And you've got here roughness variation, still roughness, dirt, so you can add some dirt into it. Oxidization. Oh, so you can see you've got some uh, there. Oh, that looks great. Scratches, you can even add some scratches into it. Mm. Well, you can't see any scratches there, but still it says, oh, scratches intensity. Let's push that up. Can't really see much there of scratches. And relief variation. Now, some of these, quite often you, you change them. It doesn't seem to make that much difference. And it might be useful for different other options. So maybe one option is battling against the other option. So it doesn't end up with a, the end. You've even got here brush. And you've also got polish. So, oh, you can then, yes, you can see the scratches. There's scratches. Obviously, on the other one, it didn't really know. No, also, use mask input. You've got finish density. Spade, I mean, loads. <laughs> you could spend ages going spade pattern tile. Right? Oh, so you've got, obviously, make it a little bit smaller there. I mean, that's lovely. And also, you can modify the X direction. So you could probably make it slightly squeeze. I don't know. Also, you've got spade pattern blur. You've got wear density. There's a lot. You can see as I go through this, you've got spade pattern dirt color. You can change that. So let's go for red. I'm exploring this one. I don't know. Maybe it's if you change certain things. Yes, you can see the red coming through there. Got the red there. Mask input, position, offset. These ones offset seem to be in all of them. You've got rotation, so you can rotate it. See what I mean? There seems to be an issue here. Don't know what it is. It seems to, you change the offset, but you can move them around and that seems to fix it. You've also got contrast, hue shift again. And you can see now you get blue design there. Got height range and so on. Make loads more features. Again, at any point, you can always go to blending modes and you can go for lighten and run through it. Side for different say, or whatever subtract and then layer and flatten image and so on that's all via this however you've also got this option so i'm just going to click this one which is lovely lighting so i've shown you got thousands of features in some of these but you've also got lighting and you can see here you've got the standard set of options here and you can change the rotation now it's not as flexible as a 3d app 
Would have been nice if it was like a sort of 3D globe or something you can manipulate in some way. I think they could have made it more interactive. Doesn't seem to be, you've got height. So you can tweak that, go that way, 7.3. And you can see just by changing the height, creates a different design of that lighting. You've also got color. So you decide, you know what? Let's go for red. So you can change the, now it'd be brilliant if the lighting was different sources, maybe images. Maybe gradients, that would be superb as well. But you can see you can change that. And you've also got exposure as well. So you can change, tweak that, make that there. And also change the displacement. Seems to create like shadow effects and those sort of things there. Hmm. Loads of different options. Obviously something to explore for each of the various ones. And like I said, this one's available and there's tons and tons of other ones. Please explore all the various properties available here by material. So that's materials. Materials, great feature in Photoshop, the new version of Photoshop 2023, PC and Mac. I'm assuming it's PC. <laughs> My apologies. I've gone all the way through this, assuming that it works like that on a PC. This is on a Mac, of course, but it should be available on PCs as well. And I think it's a great feature and literally millions of things to explore and you can combine it with other options so layer and flatten image and then of course you can go to window and libraries and maybe use all the various pattern features shape features etc to create even more designs from that very basic design if you want a seamless tile design from it use that library feature to use to do that so hope you found this tutorial of interest any questions please let me know in the comments below always great to hear from you always wonderful if you've got any ideas about the materials what things you would like to see have you downloaded any of the materials? Have you gone to that Adobe website, the community website and download them? How have you found those? I haven't done them, I must admit. I've done one or two, perfect reason, but you might find you've got loads of great options there. Thank you much.